it may sound like a lofty thing to say, but basically, you know, what are we doing on this planet? I'm, I think through the Beatle experience that we'd had, we'd grown so many years within a short period of time. I'd experienced so many things and met so many people, but I realized there was nothing actually that was giving me a buzz anymore. I think fame is a good thing in terms of giving you a uh, heightened experience or, or at least more experience and um, but then it's what you do with that or what what that uncovers I think for me you know as I say I realize I want to you know I just want more this isn't it this isn't it you know um, fame is not the goal money you know although money is nice to have it can buy you a bit of freedom you know you can go to the Bahamas when you want but it doesn't it's not the answer and the answer you know is um, how to get peace of mind and how to be happy that's really what we're supposed to be here for and uh, the difficult thing is that we all go through our lives and through our days and we don't experience bliss and you know it's a very subtle thing and uh, to experience that and to be able to know how to do that is uh, something you don't just stumble across, you've got to search for it. Did you experience bliss on stage or in the studio? Um, in a way, did performing it put you in touch with, with, that, with that bliss? Well, we had happiness at times and, you know, not the kind of bliss I mean where every atom of your body is just buzzing, you know, because it's, again, it's beyond the mind. It's like, you know, it's, it's when there's no thought involved that i mean it's it's a pretty tricky thing to try to um, <coughs> to get to that stage because it means controlling the mind and being able to transcend the relative states of consciousness waking sleeping dreaming which is all we we really know uh, but there is another state that um, goes beyond all that and it's in that state that's where you know the bliss and the knowledge uh, you know that that's available is You know, I get confused when I look around at the world and I see everybody's running around. And, you know, as Bob Dylan said, he not busy being born is busy dying. And yet nobody's trying to figure out what's the cause of death and what happens when you die. I mean, that to me is the only thing really that's of any importance. The rest is all secondary. Do you think pop musicians are afraid to deal with subjects that are so big or it just doesn't occur to them? Or do people think, oh, it's not commercial enough? Who wants to talk about life itself? I don't know what anybody else thinks. And, um, you know, as the years have gone by, I seem to have found myself more and more out on a limb as far as, you know, that kind of thing goes. I mean, even close friends of mine, you know, they maybe don't want to talk about it because they don't understand it. but. I believed in the thing that I read years ago, which I think was in the Bible. It said, knock and the door will be opened. And it's true. If you want to know anything in this life, you just have to knock on the door, whether that be some physically on somebody else's door and ask them a question or which I was lucky to find is the meditation is, you know, it's all within because if you think about it, there isn't anything I mean, in creation, the whole of creation that <clears throat> is perfect. You know, there is nothing that goes wrong with nature. Only what man does, then it goes wrong. But we are made of that thing. The very essence of our being, of every atom in our body, is made from this perfect knowledge, this perfect consciousness. But superimposed on that is through, if I can use the word, the tidal wave of bull that goes through the world. It's cable, you can say that. Yeah, so there's this, we're being barraged by, um, you know, by bull. But not only that, the way the world is structured or the way creation is structured, we have duality, which says, yes, no, good, bad, loss, gain, birth, death. And it's a, this circle that you get trapped in. It's like the Memphis blues again. And that's the hardest thing to, <clears throat> to understand what is causing um, both of these things, what's causing day and night, good and bad. It's all the, the cause and this is the effect. So, I mean, we're getting really transcendental here, but well, to no, say I, that it, our 
our physical being is really um, on a very, very subtle level. It's just like the sap in a tree mm -hmm. is, is the sap and it runs throughout all the parts of the tree. Now, it's like that. Our bodies are manifesting into physical bodies, but the cause of the sap is pure consciousness, pure awareness, and that is perfect and perfect knowledge. But we have to tap into that to understand it. You know, in, in England, you always get, um, as far as I was concerned, the left, the center, and the right, they're all really the same. They're all different shades of the same grayness. And although it was a long shot, you know, Maharishi tried to get these people formed together into a party which would be called the Natural Law Party, which was... Um, the same Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And the idea behind it really is to have consciousness as the basic thing because really you know we get in government or we get in any situation in life we get the reflection of our own consciousness we can't really complain about what we have because that is us it's a reflection of our our own being now if we could have um, people who are actually conscious in a spiritual sense then all the underlying problems to society, I mean, it wouldn't be able to change just overnight, but over a generation or two generations, you could have things where, for instance, say in England, and I'm sure it's the same here, you get disease. So you've got a lot of expenditure on hospitals and on fixing up people who have disease. Now, the problem is that most doctors, they study disease. They don't know about health. So you'd need to reprogram stuff so that you teach people about how to be healthy. That way, you don't spend so much money on, on disease. You'd have, people would be healthier. You wouldn't have such a you know, requirement for you know, all, this, all the various things that take up all the money. You'd be able to use that money for something else. So the natural law that operates on this planet or in the universe Everything, as I said earlier, everything works in a perfect order. And there's a scheme to things which has a certain intelligence that drives it and makes everything work. Now, if we as individuals could go to that level of consciousness where we can bring it into our being, and as Maharishi Mahesh Yogi once said, for a forest to be green, each tree must be green. So it's no use just one or two people being, you know, like this. You'd have to make the whole of society, if they had that understanding. And that's what I think, really, you'd have to, you know, school people. Um, right from being children, teach people about their health, about their bodies, about consciousness, because it's all to do with consciousness. Raise the level of consciousness, and then everything automatically becomes better. Do you think it can happen, or do you think people are totally on autopilot too much? It, it can happen, but... It's something which will take a long, long time, generations of people. I mean, if you look now, just through, say, from the 60s or the 50s, um, there's a lot more people, thanks to, say, Indian music, thanks to rock and roll music, uh, who have got much more understanding. You go out there on the street now, you can find Indian spice shops, Indian restaurants, and places to go for yoga, for meditation. There's a much higher awareness, generally, uh, on those kind of things. And so it is seeping through. I mean, where did all the really good hippies go when they all dropped out? I think a lot of them are, you know, have, you know, brought up, there's probably two generations of kids now who are much more um, open to that type of consciousness. And they've been brought up by, you know, being vegetarian or whatever that helps the society become, you know, a much more um, balanced. That's, it's all to do with the balance. You know, we've got too much extreme going on. You're optimistic. You have to be optimistic, yeah. You know, yeah. it is getting better and worse because that's the nature of relativity. You know, good and bad, good and bad. But the individual, you know, if the individual gets um, that consciousness, then it doesn't matter because in a way you can retain the balance between the good and the bad. You know, because really, good and bad are the same. Um, 
they are. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. So it's like in the middle is the safe, safe um, path. 